uh, 31st of March, the very last day of March 2022. Hi everybody, I'm Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. Welcome to the Nuclear Super Scumbag Show. You can call in to the Nuclear Scumbag Show. At 709-589-4406-4406. And uh, Super Scumbag Show. That makes a lot more sense, do not it? The Nuclear Super Scumbag Show. Because, yeah, a nuclear scumbag show is, uh, that's a pretty good name, but the nuclear super scumbag show, that, uh, um, Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie, uh, Marie Curry, Canadian, she won two Nobel Prizes, I think it was. She couldn't accept them because she lost both of her hands. And she was busy looking for somebody to wipe her. Oh, man, the nuclear industry is just a disaster. I, I have to wonder that if, you know, decent people were running the nuclear industry, could it have some redeeming qualities? Nah. <laughs> Not a chance. Boost for size, we'll see, which is in the United Kingdom. And modular nuclear ambitions that don't exist, of course. You know, we have we have solar power, we have wind power, we have we can back that up with geothermal twenty four hours a day power and tidal power twenty four hours a day, predictable for thousands of years into the future. And you can back it up with storage on top of that with compressed air storage where you dig mine shafts and compress air down to it or pumped hydro. And that technology is obsolete, old yawning technology. It's dirt cheap. There's no proprietary on it. Anybody can uh, use it. Those six uh, would solve everything. No, but they're gonna. The world will spend trillions of dollars trying to develop a small modular reactor. Uh, they've already spent a trillion pretending that it fits on trucks and is made in assembly lines. <laughs> it doesn't even exist. But they won't come up with solutions that are available. <laughs> This is size we'll see. This is a rendition of what it's going to look like. It's a new nuclear power plant going to be built in the United Kingdom, sur surrounded by farms, built in prime farmland. So all that food will be radioactive. All the food they're shipping out is deadly killer food. These plants hemorrhage radiation all day, every day, just from the fuel pools they're still splitting the atom that's why they're in a pool those atoms hemorrhage out because there's no containment it just doesn't even seem possible does it that they would build it in but most nuclear power plants are built in farmland so purposely can kill you by bioaccumulating through eating it Boost for size, we'll see, and modular nuclear ambitions. Sends a clear message to investors that Britain backs nuclear as a green technology. Well, just because Britain backs it as a green technology, it doesn't mean it's a green technology. And look at Britain. Britain backed nuclear. They took their nuclear weapons and down to Australia, waited for the wind to blow across Australia and set them off. When the wind was blown across Australia, that's when they set off the nuclear weapons. Purposely to contaminate Australia. 
They also detonated dirty bombs where they wrapped uranium or plutonium that's already gone through a chain reaction in conventional weapons. Go out and ask uh, the victims that are on Christmas Island whose babies are just lumps of jelly. How uh, responsible is United Kingdom's government? UK will cut emissions. It'll cut your throat is what they'll cut. This follows the Net Zero, which was a paper written by Miles Allen. And it was a terrible paper at that. And so the whole idiot machine out there uh, was jacked by United Nations and then everybody all of a sudden got a, this fable net zero. The only way to get net zero is if nobody exists on a planet. This is another disturbing story, Mike, from the United Kingdom. The Berkshire Nuclear Weapons Factory taken out of special measures because there's just a bunch of degenerates. That's a nuclear weapons facility. Do you see anything weird about this? It's in prime farmland, right up to the boundaries. Why would you put farms around a nuclear facility? My goodness. You really, truly... Like, I'm not kidding. you really, truly got to be some incredibly evil entity to do something like this. you got to have, just this, uh, to allow it, you got to have incredible contempt for all species and humans. It's just, what the hell? Your future nuclear power plants is going to be surrounded by farms. Your current f power plants are surrounded by farms. Your... Weapons manufacturing facilities, all of these are hemorrhaging radiation surrounded by farms. The farms soak up the constant emissions and they stick it in the supermarket. And you give it to your loved ones and yourself, your children get sick and die. It's not, and it's not an accident. It's, it's like an accident where they waited for... Australia wins when they were doing it in Montebello and Maralinga setting off nuclear weapons, waiting for the wind to blow across the country. Why would you even take it to Australia? Why wouldn't you just do it where you were too? Why are you so dark anyway? Disconnected from any kind of reality. The Office for Nuclear Regulation says there have been significant sustained safety improvements uh, in a place, a nuclear wasteland surrounded by farms. I can't wrap my mind around it. I really... I know there's a lot of evil and crazy evil people, but how did that even... How, how does that happen? Why do they hate everybody so much? Berkshire's top secret nuclear weapons facility, surrounded by farms, deadly food. Same as their power plants in America and everywhere else. The biggest producer of wheat bases of food worldwide is a nuclear wasteland called Ukraine. Makes me cry all the time. It actually hurts me when I see it. The Atomic Weapons Establishment site has been under extra scrutiny. Is that some kind of sick joke? Or what, the IAEA went there or something? There's no checks and balances for the nuclear industry. From fake inspectors for nearly a decade over safety concerns. Have you got safety concerns for over a decade? It's like, it's hard to put it in the words that are not offensive. There's nothing more offensive than surrounding nuclear facilities with farms, 
Because everybody eats the food, gets sick, and dies. So I'm satisfied both sides have demonstrated evidence of significant sustained safety improvements. That was over 10 years. At a nuclear weapons facility. Ah, uh, yeah, so Canada, where did this even come from? Nuclear power in Canada was left out of the lucrative federal green program. It's the green bonds you can buy <coughs> and get a tax break. And the nuclear industry is, is unhinged. They're actually unhinged. Nuclear power left out of a lucrative federal green program. Well, remember a few months back, Bruce Power had bought a bunch of green bonds uh, for nuclear. And we fr I freaked out about it. I thought it was just despicable. And not that long ago, Bruce Power, I think it was around $4 billion for um, pumped storage. The pump, that money should have went to renewable energy for storage, for renewable energy. And uh, last year, we covered around 700 uh, windmill sites in Ontario that were disenfranchised and taken off the grid and, and rejected for subsidies, which leaves only one thing there really was nuclear, see? It's, goes, it's beyond evil what they've done. It's beyond, and no, total disregard for the country, total disregard for life, just because there are a bunch of unions and they feel that uh, they're better at every single other energy form on the planet. Nothing compares to the nuclear industry. This is how they actually feel. This is a, a I'd say it lately, is supposed to be a politician. That's not honest. Completely deceptive and deceitful and dishonest and disingenuous. Bruce Power, of course, how many times have we covered stories about Bruce Power? The arrogance to show uh, windmills when they closed down over 700 farms. And this creature right here is the workers' union in the nuclear industry. Really a disgusting parasite. And that's who gets the job. It's on purpose, right? And they fight for that job. They know that's where a parasite belongs. I was really shocked um, by his response. I will we'll read it here now. To meet Canada's carbon emission goals, Canada's carbon... Nuclear power will have to be a large part of the country's electricity, said him. No, nuclear is not carbon free. It's not green. It doesn't have any attributes where it can be in the future. It's the most carbon intensive thing in human history. It's splitting the atom on top of that, released into the environment. Uh, from all the, it's dirty, the whole industry is dirty. Federal government will not reach their 2030 climate target or the fabled net zero from Miles Allen by 2050 without nuclear power as the base load, says the politician. This is absurdness. Pumped hydro, compressed air storage, geothermal, tidal energies, wind and solar, last year was 291 gigawatts of renewables came online. That's equal to over 333 nuclear power plants in just a 12-month period. But that's the magic formula. If you use all six of those, if you're lucky enough, you can use all six of those, 
Uh, you don't need coal, oil, gas, or nuclear, or anything else. You're completely sustainable for huge cities. All the peak power you could ever dream of. Which is why he and many others, supporters of nuclear power. Really, since nothing else exists, only nuclear power that can do the job. Really. Really, because that's what you said in the interview. The Bruce Power is some kind of weird... The people that the so-called spokespeople, we've covered them for how long? How many years? They're always goblish. They're always perpetual lawyers. And they're, they're destroying Canada. They're literally destroying Canada with their false fables. The Bruce Nuclear Power Facility was shocked when nuclear power was excluded. They weren't really shocked. They're just incredibly greedy. From a lucrative five billion green bond initiative, which is meant for green, like the future. Nuclear is not a future. Nuclear is the end of all species. The federal government designed to fund climate-friendly projects in order to reach Canada's carbon emissions, which was cooked up by a group of creeps in the Paris Accord in 2015 in France. These were not good-intentioned people. This was strictly about promoting nuclear. Confused because we don't we know nuclear power is clean power. Nuclear power can't be clean for goodness sakes. You're boiling a million gallons a minute into the atmosphere. For starters, all nuclear power plants need external cold oil and gas facilities to pound them, to power them. Confused because it's at a step with the rest of the world. No, it's not at a step with the rest of the world, for goodness sakes. Confused because the federal government is sending mixed uh, singles. No, the nuclear industry took over most of the government. And some good people finally said, that's enough of this. And the nuclear industry is upset because they don't get everything. Somebody else might get something. Because nobody's allowed to have a future under the nuclear industry. Everybody else is scum. Only the nuclear industry is able to do something. That's the definition of bullies, by the way, what they're doing in this interview. Do they not support it? It's Robert Walker, the head of the Canadian Nuclear Workers Council. Robert Walker. Which is why now we named our show... The Nuclear Super Scumbag Show. That's Robert Walker there. That's a scumbag. That's a super scumbag, actually. It's people like that is what destroys countries, right? They're in positions of power. They influence a lot of people. And he, he uh, perpetually lies. It's, it's a horrible, disgusting parasite is what he actually is on the entire country. He's a parasite now that will take down the country so he can pretend that he has redeeming qualities. Earlier this year, the federal government invested $27 million, which is literally nothing. It's nothing into the development of small modular reactors in Ontario. 20, 20, you can't do anything for $27 billion in the nuclear industry. Like, do you, they don't use nothing on the most precious metals on the planet that ends up getting bombarded with neutrons and can't be recycled. Yet they'll recycle it, radioactive metals, and put it in your children's toys and clothes and everything else. But a few weeks later, left nuclear power on the sideline of the Green Bond Program, lumping it in with oil and gas, because that's what it should be lumped in with. It needs oil and gas just to run. It can't run on its own power. To lump it in with alcohol, tobacco, arms manufacturing. Yeah, because it's a deadly product. 
He said, I think it's an insult to many scumbag men and scumbag women that will go to work at the scumbag Bruce nuclear power genocide machine disease factory every day and keeps the light on your community as if the other energies won't keep the lights on your community, huh? Really? Because nuclear is anything to keep the lights on your community. What an arrogant, incredible arrogant thing to say. The government hasn't explained their reasoning other than to say it's in step with other similar green bond initiatives around the world. The EU just came out and said they're going to vote gas and nuclear out of the taxonomy. The exclusion will likely result in it being tougher to finance nuclear project. I'm pretty sure they'll get their money. They've been robbing Canadians of their futures for 60 years now. I can't see that stopping anytime soon. They pretty well got the country destroyed by bankrupting it for the scumbag nuclear. $13 billion now. Uh, $26 billion on the nuclear plants in Ontario. They scammed after Fukushima melted down. 93 days after Fukushima melted down down started Canada the nuclear industry in Canada lifted all bans and poisoned all Canadians for the last 11 years with radioactive food from Japan because Japan never had nowhere else to ship it Canada was like yeah we don't need no paper ship it over here we don't need to check it ship it over here we don't care about Canadians we're the nuclear industry ship it over here you think that Alzheimer's and dementia and autism and diabetes and Down syndrome and heart problems, liver, lung and respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, cancers have exploded across Canada just randomly. No, it's because the Canadian nuclear industry lifted the ban on radioactive food from a nuclear wasteland in 2011 when 55 other countries banned it for a decade. That's the nuclear industry. 100% mass murders. It's outrageous. It's so criminal, it defies any kind of rationale. And Robert Walker obviously couldn't care less about Canadians. You go watch the interview, you can see his fake interview in that story. It's disgusting. Feedback sat on the Canadian nuclear waste plan. An online survey. I got a survey there right now. Let's check it out. Is the nuclear disease factories, also known as nuclear power plants, actually green energy? And 94% got it right and said no. And the nuclear industry said, yeah, it's green energy. You gotta be pretty stupid to call nuclear green energy. You literally gotta be stupid. They're just evil. And that's what we see, it's just evil. They know better, they're, they're just evil. They don't care about anything. They're just evil. When you put evil people in positions of authority, you can destroy a country. They did with the food from Japan, the despicable cowards. The survey. Survey, which was unveiled on Monday, can be assessed on the Nuclear Waste Management Organization's website. This is the industries in charge of the most toxic stuff in human history. And they've already spent 20 years and still can't find anywhere to put it. And if they do find something, it'll take them 25 to 30 years to build something. In other words, They'll make sure everybody gets sick from the constant emissions before they finally put it somewhere where it's not polluting the planet all day, every day. Everything is vented into your environment. It's, it's really, it's not an accident what they're doing, see? It's not an accident that Walker is evil. The agency, agency said it remains on track to announce sometime next year a preferred site for the storage facility. This is to house 3 million spent fuel rods from Canada's reactors. 
Each rod is about the size of a fire log. The agency has said it won't locate the storage facility near a community that opposes it. Why would you put it near a community? It's a nuclear waste uh, facility. They actually bought, I can't remember how many acres of prime farmland. And they want the farmers to keep farming if they're going to use it. No, no, we need the farmers to keep farming. Yeah, because the food is radioactive. Everything is vented on the way there. They repackage it on site. Everything is invented until the final closing of the facility. Which they figure will be 60 or 70 years after they finally gets it open. Long enough to poison every species on the planet with radioactive fallout. No one's going no one's going no one wants it. So just keep doing that and it'll always be left in the open splitting the and splitting the atoms head hemorrhaging into the environment. I'll show you what it means. Uh, I'm just livid. I'm just livid that they're doing this. This is a model I'm gonna show you of France's radioactive follow model over sixteen days. 16 days of radioactive fallout. The 16 days covered the whole planet. It doesn't go away for millions of years on top of that. Pulsing energy every second at the speed of light on top of that. Poisoning every species on top of that or sterilizing them. Why are they so evil? Why are they so dark? Why are they so twisted? Here's, look, Canada was shipped, and still is, shipping food in from the middle, each one of those markers, as 14 prefectures in Japan, half the country where food was banned for over a decade. Canada didn't even bother blocking it. Canada's not shipping it in here. We got too many Canadians. We got to get rid of them and fill it up with immigrants. Even after a storage site has been chosen, the approved facility wouldn't be operational until sometime in the 2040s. The 2040s. The 2040s. Nothing ever comes in that schedule with nuclear. So they started in 2002. So they're, they're, they're talking 50, it'll take them 50 years. If they can find a spot soon, it'll be around 50 years before they have one that's opens doors. Then it's going to take another 60 to 100 years to put all the fuel down in it. Do you think these people are actually honest or sincere or genuine? Do you think they're actually trying to come up with solutions? Do you think they're actually even humans? I can't, I can't accept that they're humans would do this to everybody else. That's the norm in the nuclear industry, by the way. It's expected to create 500 direct jobs once it's in operation in, you know, 30 plus years or so. Why would you even put that in there? Uh, and is she not Nation, my apologies if I butchered it, said it remains opposed to the transport of nuclear waste through its traditional territory, saying the risk for an environmental disaster is too great. Well, bless their hearts. That's probably the only common sense ones we've seen in months. Finland's path to final disposal of nuclear waste. A four-decade journey. Look where they're going to put it, right under water. There's sinkholes in the ocean now in northern Canada. If you have a meltdown, it consumes all the gravel and everything else, and you end up with a sinkhole there too. Leading to an operation license application construction of the world's first deep hole in the ground for nuclear waste. They call it a geological repository. 
you have to, uh, in order to guarantee that it'll be okay, you need to put it down there for a couple of thousand years, some of it, and then wait and see what happens. And they're going to do it backwards. They'll put it down there and crash their fingers and hope everything goes good. But they're going to do it in the stupidest way possible is they're actually going to put it under water. At some point, that water is going to end up down there. It gets worse on top of that. They claim that if they wrap it in uh, copper, it'll be okay. Poseva is the expert organization responsible for final disposal of nuclear fuel in its, of its owners in Finland, its owners. It's not an expert organization because they've never done a deep, repository, geological repository before. So they can't be an expert if you didn't do it before. The site investigation for hosting a deep hole in the ground for nuclear waste, known as the deep hole in the ground for nuclear waste, were started in the 1980s. You lose all faith for academics when you see stuff like that, don't you? In 1994, the Finnish parliament passed a law preventing the export and import of spent nuclear fuel. The site to host the final disposal facility was selected in 1999, 23 years ago. Around 420 meters below the sea level was reached in 2010. Below the ocean. And the ocean will get in there. Once you start detonating down there, you take the integrity of the rocks away. A drill and blast excavation method. Oh, grouting of groundwater. Well, grouting's not going to last for a million years, or 10 years probably, in this environment. The principle of geological final disposal is to isolate the nuclear waste in a hole in the ground from the biosphere until its radioactivity is decreased to an insignificant level. Well, they don't know if it's insignificant. They refuse to study the adverse effects of it. A disposal canister, a bentonite buffer, a bentonite backfill of the disposition tunnel, the plug, enclosures of other underground openings, and the final hole in the ground with nuclear waste. The primary barrier to contain and isolate the spent fuel from the nuclear reactors, from the biosphere, is copper cast iron canisters, which is just stuff here. So this is the Nuclear Waste Management Organization's pet little morons. This is a story in 2021. Confidence in copper coating. But a Canadian nuclear waste management organization says they can hold this copper. Putting copper will st stop uh, the containment from uh, disintegrating, they claim, for over a million years. For a million years. Of course, they can't prove this is going to last for five years or ten years, let alone a million years. It's absurd to suggest that copper, because like nuclear has this incredible heat in these casts, yeah? It also has another effect, it's known as the Wigner effect, where it breaks down the integrity of any metal or structure whatsoever. It doesn't matter what it is, it breaks down the integrity of it. Hello, North Carolina.
Hi, James. Uh, you, you. Yeah, you want to go on? I want to put you online, or? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Give me a second. How's that? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. I'll do. Great, great. So, so James, yeah, you wanted so to talk time. about something that happened to you. Go ahead. Yeah, that that guy who goes by uh, Dana Dernford and Kevin Blanche debunked. I think his name is Craig. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He, he sends me, he, he comments on an old video I did about you a long time. And he writes, and he, he writes, uh, uh, Dana Dernford, the number one scam artist or something like that. And I was, I was astonished. I'm like, I've been waiting forever for this guy to come my way, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and so I'm like, hey, Craig, like, how you doing? I haven't seen you, on, I haven't seen you around very often. Yeah, he's like, been, he's been, he hasn't showed up for a while, I noticed, yeah. So he, so he writes, so he writes, well, I just did a video on Dana or something like that. This I didn't, I haven't watched it or anything. Yeah, but okay. he says, he says, every day I search for, because I wrote to him, like, I've been finally trying to, reach you man how you doing like you know i hope you got your booster shot you know <laughs> yeah, and, me too. and so i and he, and he's like uh he's like well every day i search for fukushima and i haven't found you before and and uh, and, uh, and i'm like you know this guy i i studied this guy for a long time like i've been kind of fascinated this guy's got connections with the industry. He does, he's yeah. He's definitely yeah. getting paid. He's definitely, this guy's definitely getting paid. He, like that site, he, he gave the, he gave the keys to that site to a public relation firm is what he's got done. Craig doesn't control that site. Um, the guy that's commenting, he comments every day on uh, Fukushima videos. That's not Craig, right? Because I know that person right. he doesn't talk like that at all it's probably a japanese firm i guess right so they, they, they needed a site to attack me in particular because of the research expeditions that i've done they needed and they, this is how it works the industry actually works that way but go, go ahead i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no you're you're absolutely right i mean I mean, I'm picking this up, or it's absolutely obvious. Because he's had old videos where he's at, like, these strange trade shows. And yep. he's showing off Geiger counters. He's trying to come across like he's some kind of expert in radiological measurement. The guy's a complete idiot, obviously, you know? Yeah, he's a shill. He's like, a nuclear shill. This is, they have a lot of them out there. There's quite a few of them out there that attack me that way. He's not the he's the most prolific, I think, right? Well, but, right. I think he's definitely, definitely where it's so obvious that there's because there's things where he's got this civil defense. He's got these civil defense boxes in the background. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, anyone that's got hold of stuff like the memorabilia of civil defense, they've got to be connected to the DOE, Department of Energy. They have all these people like. They could totally utilize a guy like Craig as the perfect tool to go run around on YouTube, find everyone that dissent opinion on nuclear energy, because the guy, the guy's clearly he's he's, he's done these videos where he said, oh yeah, they're going to release the trade water and it's it's safe, it, you know, it's practically safe to drink. He actually says this. I, I record that. I sample wow. the shit out of it. Wow, that's crazy. You know. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know. I'm like, go, you know, it, and it's like these are the kind of people that the industry needs where, you know, because he does comment on other people, and it catches a lot of people off guard because they're like, who the hell do you think you are? I didn't mean that or anything <laughs> like that. Here, and here he is just like stampling on these people because, you know, he's just getting paid to do it, you know? Yeah, and, no, and so I do, yeah, he, no. He... Like he originally started up all of this, but he passed that over. I remember there was one comment where somebody asked him why he wasn't monitorizing his videos. He said he didn't have um, a social insurance number. 
I thought that was such a strange reply. I, I heard that too. Yeah. And this guy claims he sells guns. He does. He does. He goes to the trade. I don't. Well, he goes to those trade shows where there's guns being. Uh, he also sells survival food, right? Survival right, gear, right. yeah. To um, um, to uh, what do you call them again? The people, the preppers, is it? They got a name for them. To people that are trying to make sure they can protect themselves, because nobody else is going to protect them. And uh, I always felt that he was. That was his way. He would report him to the police. Then at this stage, once he found him. Right, right. Right, James? Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> you can't exist. The guy's lying. You can't have a... There's no way you can't have a social security number. You can't exist. Right, it was, re it was really strange. <laughs> and uh, he... He's lying. It's just flat out lying because he knows he's protected. <laughs> and he's trying to make people think this. <laughs> and it's obvious. It's so odd. And the thing is, I wrote him back. I'm like, hey, you know, like... <laughs> Yeah, and he, he just deletes the comment. He deletes it. You know, he doesn't yeah. want any, but he didn't, it was like, it was like he was so cut off guard because I'm like, man, I don't, I, all the crap I've been putting up on YouTube was just for you because he said, every day I searched for Fukushima and I said, I figured that, Craig. Yeah. And that's why I didn't label any of my things Fukushima. <laughs> I, wanted, I didn't want to make it easy for you. <laughs> You don't want to make it easy for you. He's, uh, yeah, I get to freak them out. That's, that's interesting, James, you say that, because he, that's that's what he's up to. He's trying to discourage you from participating, and that's a success for him, right? He And he, he'll poke away at you if you let him. You know, it's like, uh, it's like a glass of water, right? You know, how, how heavy is a glass of water? And so a, gla a glass of water is not very heavy, 16 ounces or something like that, right? But if you keep it up in your hand for an hour, it feels like it's two pounds. And if you keep that glass in your hand for about 24 hours, your arm is numb, you can't hold it anymore, you can't think of anything else, you're just concentrated on this glass. That's what Craig does to people. He becomes that glass of water where it should only weigh 16 ounces, but all of a sudden it just crushes you and, and wrecks your life. Right. Yeah, Jane. Right, right. He, Craig, Craig, he's, Craig he's, should you know, be in jail. Yeah, he should be in jail, right, right. that guy? Oh, well. For well, molesting, yeah, for molesting sheep or something, probably, right? But, uh, sure, sure, sure. I, well, you know, there's, there's <laughs> no way, this, there's no way a woman would ever put up with a guy like Craig. You tell <laughs> not you not know, even a female sheep know? would either, on top of that, yeah. No. <laughs> Not at all. No, but, but but what's interesting is that there's these people out there like him, and and, yeah. you, and you've demonstrated on your show over and over again, yeah. Yeah. Helen Kellicott, all these people right. that that the industry hides behind, right? They hide yeah. behind these people. Yeah, the in industry and can't challenge they, me or you. They they use these entities. I'm sorry. Go go ahead, James. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's everyone that watches your show. If you threw us in a room full of those people, we would tear <laughs> them all apart. <laughs> That's a fact. Body and soul. That's I mean, a fact. They would. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the one the one thing is, I I try to bring this. I follow a lot of people on YouTube. Like you know, there's, a, a lot, there's this one neurologist, Kevin McCain. He does right. you know live shows with a, with a big audience and. I brought up one time because he's in Japan, right? This guy's in yeah, Japan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he's like trying to trying to figure out like how the lab released everything and this and that. And I'm like, you know, and I bring up Fukushima. He downplays the whole thing. He's just like, you know what? Um, Shocking. I was up there at Fukushima, and we had the we had those seminars, and nothing went off. You know, I'm thinking like, you can't measure the stuff coming off those cores. No. I think you rely on test equipment. You're gonna rely. You're wow. gonna your life rely on test equipment. Tell me full well there's a meltdown and you're a neuroscience. You're yeah. a No, no, that's a brilliant point actually. And um, what did he? What was his reply again? I'm sorry. It was just that it was. That? I'm sorry. You challenged him, and did he reply to that? No. Yeah, well, he, he, he's like, no. But, but I tell him, and so, I, so, I, so then I change and I said, listen, you know, nuclear power plants, 
they need two forms of external power in order to operate. Yeah, perfect. I bring this up to a lot of key people, and they 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 hear it like they like I'm an idiot or something. Well, yeah, kind of. Like, oh no, that can't be right. That can't be right. I've never heard that. No, 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 no that can't be right. Yeah, I get it too. <laughs> So it's like that. that is the epitome of two steps back, one step forward. Well, how do you call something clean energy when you need two damn plants in order to operate that damn plant? Right. I mean, it's an illusion. It's a lie. And you're going to use all these people on YouTube. You're going to demonify Dana and Kevin Blanche, and they think they're going to get away with it. You know, they think this is, this, this is, this is their tactic. It's the best they can do. And it's so laughable. And I think, you know, I think, I think it's going to crack someday because once enough like-minded people, I mean, once enough people understand, like, a nuclear power plant needs fossil fuel plants for it to operate, and if it, and those power feeds go away, then the planet's doomed? Are you kidding me? Like, how could this be a good thing? Well, I'm, no one's, right. no one's asking that question. It's so weird to have somebody else say it, though. Like, you, like here, listening to you say it, that's so... <laughs> Because I I never get to hear anybody saying it. See? It it I makes know, perfect makes I, I per know. it makes perfect sense when you say it. That's the whole thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. To to anybody that's to anybody that's being you know, like when you have a conversation with somebody, what are you talking about? The moon or the stars? You're talking about an engine, or you're talking about you know tools right. or whatever the case may be. Just because you're not 100% familiar with that trade or that equipment. Doesn't mean you can't have a conversation with somebody that does, right? And that's that's what a com that's what a conversation is, where you watch this, watch that. Oh, so that means you know you're able to put two and two together really quick. But when it comes to nuclear people, somehow there's this there's this barrier where they switch. They right. can't. It's because it's nuclear, I think, right? It's oh right. well, it's nuclear. I, I'm. I, I'm not qualified to say something about nuclear, but they're quali right, they seem right, to be qualified right. to say something about everything else. But when it comes, exactly. to, right? This yeah. this is uh, social engineering. It was done. It's mental illness, definitely. It's yeah. definitely not. And, and there's no other industry that relies on PR as much as nuclear. Yeah, and no. That be the Brilliant. Right there. That should be the flag. Like, but we all know. I mean, we all understand, right? Yeah. It's not about it. We 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 know we got to have plutonium. Got to keep our nuclear deterrent. We got to keep our force going. And da, 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 I mean, it's and, but it's like no, we don't need these nukes anymore. Nuclear power, nuclear weapons, all that has to go, all of it. Yeah. Got to get it. It's got. It's got to go. It's almost too late, but still, you got to make a symbolic no. course. Like, hey, it's too no. late. You know, planet screwed up. Pacific Ocean's wiped out. We've been lying right. to you guys the whole time. But you know, we're gonna at least just like raise the flag and say we're we're ending this travesty forever you know but that's whatever. that's when you come anyway. up with solutions yeah right because yeah. when the world when the world wakes up and he will that's when we'll come up yeah. with solutions you know it, it won't fix what's already happened but we'll start coming up with solutions right away there's a, so many clever people on this planet there's millions of people way better to have the conversation I have than I am. There really was. And I'm, I'm catching up, right? But there was millions of people out there who could have had this conversation that I'm having, and they refused to do it. And so the world, when the world wakes up, we will come up with solutions. And that's what I'm pushing for is the world. I understand that. And I also understand that as uh, long as I do this every day that I can, I'm going to get... Every day I get a bit better. Every day I get a better comprehension, a better way of explaining it to people. And people like yourself, of course, become extremely articulate on the subject. And I've said this a long time ago, was that that's what I need to hit. When I hit the point where people that pay attention becomes really articulated too, I've, I'm, I won. I succeeded, right? Because it's no longer just me. Now there's many people out there are able to have this incredibly rational conversation about uh, the important things in life, you know. And you proved it. You just actually proved it to me. So I'm humbled. No, great, great. No, I, I, I am. I, I am very. We all are 
so appreciative of you, Dan, and the efforts. Yeah. The, the I know. The stuff you've done on your expeditions, it's just so amazing. And I hope that one day the right the right crew comes along and just understands, like, wow, this is this is amazing. This, and here's yeah. YouTube deleting your content. I mean, this this is book burning. Billions of dollars <laughs> are worth it to you. There, I mean, it's like you know that's the biggest crime in the world. That was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. That was horrible. Yeah, it, that can't that can't be just that can't be for God. And it just can't. But anyway, I don't want to spend all your time. But thank yeah, you so okay. much, Dana. It's okay. Now, thank you, James, again for everything you've done too, man. So well, it's hugely appreciated, and uh, the support, like the, when you show up in the comment sections all the time, that makes a difference. See. You, you, you got lots of you got lots because I read the comments every night, right? And you're you're obviously a thinker. You're obviously thinking about things because you, you got lots of one-liners that I should be probably turning into T-shirts. You know what I mean, right? You're very thoughtful. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're you're Absolutely. obviously paying attention. Absolutely. But uh, fit, you call me anytime, no, James. You know that. Okay, thanks. I'll put your Sounds number great. in my thank phone you. so I knows it's you, and next time I can call you back if I miss you. Sounds great. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, yeah, hugs for you, my friend, again. God bless. There you go. That was a great... That just proved the point of what we talk about. Right? Is that... And that validates the documentation. Because when somebody else says it, it's just like a shock to my system that time. I was like, freak, that actually sounds perfect. Because you always wonder, right... How are people perceiving the things I'm talking about and I'm showing? How are they able to digest it? And, and how are they able to articulate it? And I think that's probably the first time now in over a decade that somebody actually, I've heard somebody else say it for a change. And it, and it resonates for me. Just to get you back on track, because we still got lots. It's not a bad night of news, thank goodness, right? But there's a lot of news. And confidence in copper coating. So the Finnish underground repository, which is a hole in the ground, they're claiming that if they put copper coating on it, because these uh, useful idiots here in Canada from the Nuclear Waste Management Organization uh, sold a fake bill of sale, claiming that putting copper on a canister will make it last for over a million years. Do you ever have a copper kettle or a copper or anything? Copper will break down pretty quickly in the right environment, and when you're bombarding with neutrons and gamma shines and x-rays from the inside, it can't last a million years. It can't because of the Wigner effect. So they're trying to sell you a fake bill of sales is what these two useful idiots and despicable cowards are doing. Not only that, 0 0.25 millimeters of corrosion to occur over a million years. These, this is lunatic talk. And back to that story from Finland, applied from a construction license for a final disposal facility. We can all take pride in long-term and responsible approach to the various parties in the use of energy, nuclear energy. We can run that by again. We can all take pride in the 40 years they wasted to come up with a hole in the ground, and they're going to put it right under the ocean itself. Why would you put it under the ocean? We see that repeatedly where they want to do that, by the way. Britain wanted to do it. Um, the Dutch, was it, wanted to do it? Demonstrably safe. You can't demonstrate it safe for at least a thousand years. You got to stick it under there and wait for a thousand years before you can claim that it's demonstrably safe. And recently, the company announced it will study the general criteria for Lutania 
dispose of its used nuclear fuel. So Canada developed it. Finland is using it. Now Finland is going to introduce it into Lithuania. And it's propaganda. It's 100% propaganda. It's copper. And it'll be destroyed by gamma shines, x-rays, and neutrons in a short order. It's not can't last a million years, even if you were just going to put dirt inside of it. Well, in short, it's safe to use nuclear fuel, long-lived radioactive waste storage in a geological repository. It's not a geological repository. It's a hole in the ground. Calling it a geological repository is hiding the fact it's just a simple hole in the ground. Ukrainian sector and it's under an ocean. It's just, it hurts my mind to think about it. Ukrainian section heats up as Russian back blacklisting thaws nuclear winter. Russian blacklisting thaws nuclear winter. Uranium sector, so this is a pun on words obviously. Close to thirty, close to one billion dollars worth of corporate activity was announced across uh, ASX uranium stocks on Thursday. There's a billion dollars of trading going on. I'm taking is what they're talking about. We'll be managing director of the uranium mining company that emerges from Thursday's six hundred fifty-eight million dollar merger of Deep Yellow and Vine and Vimy Resources. I thought that was an Australian. Maybe it is. Well, a company Mr. Borshoff previously ran was Paladin Energies that originally declared bankruptcy, I think it was in 2017 in Australia, shortly after getting $600 million from the Australian federal government. Paladin and... and um, Paladin Energies actually was revived. Announced it was raising two hundred million to restart the large mine in Nambia. So they're down exploiting the victims in Nambia. Like uh, France is down in Niger, right? That's where they get all their uranium from is Niger. So they went to Niger and created a civil war for over sixty years. Destroyed the country, the infrastructure, the communities, so France can have cheap uranium. It's very high grade uranium, too. South Australia uranium aspirant Boss Energy signaled that it too was moving closer to a $113 million restart of Honeymoon Mine. Didn't they just close down the Ranger Mine in Australia? Did we cover that a few days ago? Well, I mean, we cover so much news here. Daily market or spot prices for uranium have rallied to 10-year high, close to U.S. 50. 10-year high, well, Fukushima happened uh, 11 years ago. Uranium flatlined right away, so it's 11 year old. So last year, Sprout Investments in Ontario, Canada, a new company, raised a suspect amount of money from the industry and bought the physical uranium that was available. And then that artificially inflated the price of raw uranium. So they done that twice in a row. They raised more money than they expected, so they bought everything they can find. That caused a, a uh, demand, a temporary one, an artificial one too. And that's, then that they convinced investors to invest in this fable. And these people had no concept of who Sprout was or the Sprout had bought all these physical uranium uh, raw uranium and so they invested their life savings into uranium stocks 
So they kept this artificial inflation going, but that ha that can't cont continue because it's all based on a fable. But they've been doing this for 11 years. One of the biggest um, offenders was the Globe and Mail in British Columbia. They pushed uranium stocks at least three times a week as they were diving, rob just robbing hundreds of thousands of people of their life savings. So Mr. Borshoff said war in Ukraine was a further catalyst would drive increased demand for uranium. But that's, but everybody's turning against uh, nuclear because of that. So this is another artificial, this is what you call double talk, is what you're seeing there. The Canadian degenerate Camco and London listed Yellow Cake, which are new entities designed to artificially inflate the uranium stocks by buying the physical uranium, not moving it, just buying it, leaving it where it's to, and then trading, see? This is a total inside job. Are the two best equity markets bellwethers for uranium globally, and their shares have surged by 69% and 49% respectively, but that's because the shares were crashed. They're a rock bottom. Camco shut down for several years. They couldn't make a profit. They are the Sprout and other companies artificially inflated the price of raw uranium, and that brought their stock. It's an inside job. It's most likely them that orchestrated the whole thing in the first place, or their cohorts. Borshoff ran Paladin Energy for 22 years, which went bankrupt a couple of years ago. See if I can, give me a second, I can probably find it. I got a couple of hundred thousand pieces of information here. I should know right where it's too. <laughs> I think I do too for that one for Paladin. See, the crazy thing is, is I'm at this so much. Because Westinghouse went bankrupt, Paladin crashed. Who else was it? Woods pulled out of the UK nuclear. And there was one more. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. So you had... Arriva went bankrupt. You had Arriva went bankrupt. Right? And become a rano which is France government, so they wouldn't have to own up to their responsibilities to look after uh, nuclear fuel for a million years. Paladin, yeah, Paladin Energy crashes files for insolvency. They had just got $600 million. You had Westinghouse went bankrupt, and then Woods had had to pull it because they were going bankrupt, right? It was all at the one time, too. So the accident in 2015 made a severe bear market for uranium, which sends Paladin into administration in 2017, August the 21st, 2017, because we covered it when it happened. Assessing nuclear phase-out. I like those words. Controversy remains as to whether... Nuclear power should be part of a sustainable future energy mix. It is not a controversy. The industry calls it a controversy, but anybody that knows the difference, like once you learn about nuclear, you, you learn to hate. If you never hated before, you're going to learn to hate. <laughs> you're going to learn to hate. And I always say that it's, it's hard to imagine there's somebody else on the planet who got a hate on for the nuclear industry like me. <laughs> it's, it's hard to appreciate how much I hate nuclear, that I live and breathe this 24 hours a day. Because I see what they got done to the planet and to all the species and to the possibilities of a future for anything and anybody. And... Um, it's appropriate. I have the appropriate emotions. 
there's a deep, deep embedded amount of hate for this industry and contempt. It's a, and they have that for you, by the way. The industry actually has that kind of hate for you and all species. When addressing the challenges of climate change mitigation, climate change, which is caused by nuclear, air pollution, energy security, two important questions arise. Should new nuclear power plants be built? Of course, that's a no. And should there be life extensions for existing older nuclear power plants? And that's a huge no. Nuclear power has long been controversial because of concerns around nuclear accidents and handling and storage and nuclear waste. No, it's controversial because it polluted the entire planet, it's changed the sex ratio of all the species to more males than females worldwide, just from nuclear bombs. Chernobyl changed the sex ratio again of all males and females in Europe. Um, but there's so many facets to this. I could probably give you close to at least 100,000 reasons to hate nuclear. I can physically give it to you. Try name something else with those attributes. Should legendary monsterverse feature catch you size offsprings? <laughs> Because uh, Godzilla was created from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? It was a metaphor. Because you couldn't come out and directly critique or criticize the United States because you were a prisoner, right, for since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So they'd done it in their movies in a metaphor. What's the fascination, I wonder, with Australia when it comes to Godzilla? Because we hear all kinds of talk about Australia. The Japanese movies tend to be a little more than heavy, using their monsters as metaphors for real-world issues. Shin Godzilla, the most recent film from Toho, was very much entrenched in the horrors of Fukushima. Nuclear industry thinks nobody's paying attention, see? They're a lot like that uh, walker from Canada I was showing you earlier, where they know the difference, but they're just evil. What it means to have nuclear energy in Singapore power sectors net zero emissions, net zero, net zero. Oh, net zero. There's net zero for you. Hang on. I got to show it to you because I said it a couple times already. Once I do that, I got to start showing shit, unfortunately. Which was Miles Allen. Almost there. Net zero. Here's the father of net zero, Miles Allen. And he's got a cushy job now with a major university because he's the United Nations pet project. An interview with the father of global warming. So you got the father of global warming, the father of net zero, you got the father of climate change. His testimony was an important turning point in the history of climate change. And BP oil is uh, the father of uh, carbon footprint, was popularized by a large advertising campaign of the fossil company BP. How are they going to get that footprint down? <laughs> Remember, these are savages. They don't hate you. They, they despise you. There's a difference, see? There's climate change right there. Radioactive fallout 20 days after Fukushima started. What it means to have net zero. 
But I ain't that sure. And like James says, you got to have two external coal oil or gas plants just to run one of these nuclear reactors. So saying that they're zero carbon is absurd. It's like, that's absurdness. It really is. And the whole world needs to fight back because that's how bad and desperate times are. A recently report commissioned by the Energy Market Authority Energy Market Authority highlighted nuclear energy could be part of Singapore's energy mix by 2050. Hang on. Because that's frightening that they would think that way. That's the nuclear industry's influence, obviously, right? Bear with me. This is 2022, I'm going to, or 2020, I'm going to show you. I know where I'm to now. Yeah, by 2050. Where did the title of that go? Hang on. I got it right here. I smurfed up. Okay, so 2020. 2020, the global net increase in renewables was 261 gigawatts. That's the same as 300 nuclear power plants in 12 months. There's only 440 on the planet with 390 gigawatts. In 2021, it was 291 gigawatts of renewables. So in 24 months, there was the equivalent of over 600 nuclear power plants where the renewables came online. And they, the International Energy Agency estimated by 2024, there would be 4,800 gigawatts of new electricity online in the next couple of years of renewables, which is equal to around 5,500 nuclear power plants where the renewable energy is coming online. This is just in the next few years, say by 2025, which will use more energy than all the nuclear power plants all, get, all fossil plants combined will be online of new energy by 2025. Okay, back to that. Uh, Singapore. The Energy 2050 Committee projects nuclear energy can supply about 10% of Singapore's power, 10%. So let's say nuclear was had some carbon cutting qualities. Not that it does, because it doesn't. But let's say it did. Changing it to 10 percent, and if you have an accident, you got to evacuate your country. It's just, it's just sad that these people won't let Earth have a future. The world has moved on from the days of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Really? Well, probably, that's true, I suppose. And fears of radiation alleviated in recent years. Well, this is just social engineering, though, we're talking about. In fact, the radiation from a medical x-ray can expose an individual to more radiation in a nuclear power plant that is located in close proximity. So an X-ray is like a beam of energy. And if you let that run for a while, it's a very dangerous dose, right? It's a big dose. Uh, but if you are by a power plant, you're not getting that beam of energy. You're in breathing in atoms that are pulsing energy every second. You can, there's no on and off switch. So with the X-ray, there's an on and off switch. When you consume it or drink it or breathe it in, 
there's no on and off switch. It just pulses energy every second. It directs all your chromosomes, your DNA, your entire body. Uh, but the context you're using is to try to coerce people into thinking that it's harmless. They're only saying that to deceive people. Because the lobbying groups have shown it to be effective. Uh, then they invoke small modular reactors that don't exist, probably won't exist. Because renewables now is so easy to do, it's so efficient, it's so cheap. The smaller size of the modular reactors make them suitable to be planted, planted in the ground because of the gamma shines and x-rays, neutrons, closer to residential areas. Now, they're going to be running on mixed oxide fuel, by the way, if they do manage to get them built, within pockets of space in industrial areas. These small modular reactors, which are not small, by the way, can also be designed and built faster for commercial scalability, resulting in cost optimization. Right? Uh, economy of scales is what they're, they're just trying to say it a different way. A small modular reactor... Small modular reactor. It had already taken steps to beep off its know-how on nuclear power. Did you take the same steps to look at compressed air storage or pumped hydro storage? Or geothermal energy or tidal zone energy? Or wind and solar power or, or all six of those combinations? No. How come? Nuclear energy has the potential to create more jobs. Yeah, but everything has the potential. Every energy source. And you'll see that so often. I don't always highlight it because it's all the time there. I should. Because what you're seeing is my archives, right? Whenever I'm trying to, you know, understand a facet... I have to go through my archives. And so I, I screen capture a lot of things that are specifically for the future and for the archive, believe it or not. Not only just to tell the story, they are for that 100%, but I'm also thinking about my archive, that if somebody else reads my archive, are they going to be able to understand the scope of the issues when I'm by because I highlight this stuff? Is that going to have an impact on them? Well, if they're reading for any sustained amount of time, it'll start to resonate for them, for sure. It's born out of a lot of work, right? The stuff I do is tried, tested, and proven over many, many years. And the idea is to educate the population, right? To really, because that's the best way to, I thought, I, not thought, but I recognize the best way to fight a monolithic industry you got to cause infighting because that can take down a big organization and uh, education. And so, like, if you know somebody's been in a cult and they're brainwashed and you slowly start introducing them to facts, all of a sudden they can't reconcile the lies no more and they leave the cult, right? Well, that's happening in the nuclear industry because of the work we're doing. There's no maybes about this. The countries are turning away from nuclear because of the work we're doing. We're not going to get the pat on the back. That's just the way it works in the real world. But they're watching. And they can't escape the truth once they hear it, see? So there's a, like, what I mean by that is there is a lot of the nuclear industry will come across me and they go, oh, I'm going to debunk that piece of shit right there. How dare you say something about my beloved nuclear? And so they start watching my material they turn it off. They have to walk away. Because now they got a bit of a conscience, pains of conscience, right? And they can't get rid of the words, see? They can't get rid of the maps of the radioactive fallout. And so I take that little security blanket they had away from them by doing that. I know because it happens to me many times over the years. TEPCO to bolster security and safety at flawed, flawed nuclear plant in Niigata. 
very unusual to hear the media say anything derogatory about their god, the nuclear industry. Residents and politicians in that area have expressed outrage over the numerous mistakes and bungling uncovered in TEPCO's attempt to restart. They're very, they're very, they're beating the shit out of nuclear. We will continue to consider the plan in detail in order to become a nuclear power operator whom society and the people in the local community can put their trust in. So they're saying that, uh, yeah, you shouldn't trust us, but we'll get better. We'll make a commitment to establish a track record brick by brick so the power plan wins acceptance from the local community. And the company also announced March the 30th will spend more than $163 million over three years to install a device to detect outside intrusions. They won't give the victims jack, but they'll spend $163 million on a fable as a safeguard against terrorists. Really? Do you really think a terrorist is going to attack these plants? It's just... You're going to spend $163 billion so terrorists don't attack. But that's what nuclear is. Nuclear is terrorism. They are terrorists. We cover it all the time. TEPCO said it would rehire former employees that didn't volunteer to go to work at Fukushima, obviously, as well as retirees from other nuclear sites who didn't volunteer at Fukushima, I might add, who have expertise in nuclear power plant operations. Yeah, well, why don't they go to Vic and give the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society and the immigrants who don't speak the language at the nuclear meltdowns a day off? Utility also said it will hire former police officers. There's over 300 police officers died guarding Fukushima, just randomly dropped dead. And former members of the self-defense forces to increase by 30 the number of people in charge of protecting nuclear material at the plant. Really? This is how kooky the nuclear industry actually is. Terrorists are not going to go in and steal fuel from the pool. Uh, well, unless you want to call the nuclear industry terrorists, that's what they are. The nation's nuclear watchdog said the inspection will take more than a year. The nation's nuclear watchdog? Japan's got a nuclear watchdog? Uh, no one on me. I've never seen them do anything. I know they got a nuclear regulatory there, but... Um, Dirty inbreeds. It remains unclear if the company can receive approval from local communities to resume operation plan because it actually is down to the local community ultimately. So it's up to the local community in the long term, which doesn't, from what I'm seeing, doesn't look like they're going to go along with it. That's what we're seeing right across Japan. Greenpeace activists storm a French nuclear power plant. Greenpeace activists. So Greenpeace loves these people, right? Makes Greenpeace look almost useful. In the Flameville EPR nuclear reactor, a bunch of them got arrested, right? Now I've got that story coming up. Can nuclear power secure Pat the net zero? What you really meant was can dirty nuclear power secure a path to net zero? No. Nuclear is always hemorrhaging radiation. How can that work? Uh, so let's check the poll here. Where's the poll? Let's bring up the poll. Is nuclear disease factories, also known as nuclear power plants, actually green energy? You got 94% of the people, 94%. This is no, the nuclear disease factories, aka nuclear power plants, are not green energy. 
That makes me proud to be a human, right there. What's holding up the UK government's strategy for securing the country's energy supply because of Russia, Ukraine, soaring market prices, oil and gas? According to the Guardian, it's split between the Prime Minister, Boris, how the hell did Boris Johnson, Boris, ever become a Prime Minister of a country? It's like having a shoe for the Prime Minister. Hey, shoe, how are you today? Oh, okay. And Chancellor of the Exchequer, Risky Sunak, over proposals for new nuclear reactors. What, like, most of the reactors are coming offline in the next couple of years. They'll only have one online. Like France, why did they wait till the very last second to say, we're going to have a nuclear renaissance? And the company that's building them, their reactors are decades behind schedule and typically five times more expensive than the original estimates. Like if you, if you got a house and you want your driveway paved and the contractor says it's $5,000, you say, okay, let's do it. So you pave your driveway and you say, well, it's a bit more expensive. It's $25,000 that you own us. And you can't pay $25,000, so they put a lien on your house and take your house and sell it to get their money. That's the nuclear industry, see? Except they sell your future. Johnson, who does no proof can tie his own shoes, has told industry figures that, who are these people, that he, Johnson, him, Johnson, who knows nothing about nuclear, he knows nothing about it, that he wants nuclear power. It's the nuclear industry wants nuclear power, not Johnson. Johnson's told to go out and say he wants nuclear power. Because the nuclear industry gets their face on TV, everybody, including me, is going to be attacking them. It was mean roughly 30 gigawatts, 30 nuclear power plants from a source that is currently set to shrink to 3.6 gigawatts by 2030, as all but one of the United Kingdom eight plants are due to be decommissioned. Well, turned off, but not decommissioned. United Kingdom has never decommissioned a single reactor or submarine. I don't know why they have a decommissioned authority. They've never done nothing. They get in the media and uh, get awards and raises, but they don't do anything. The constant base supply of nuclear power continue to meet demand when renewable generation falters because the wind isn't blown and the sun isn't shining. Well, hell, why don't you get... Why don't you get... pumped hydro and compressed your storage? Or is that stupid? It's coming up with solutions now, stupid. So pumped hydro. I know this is going to sound confusing to all the academics. You're going to pump water up a hill with extra energy. And when the sun ain't shining or the wind's not blowing, you let the water go down the hill. That's your peak energy, by the way, right there. And pump compressed your wind storage. So extra energy pumps air down in tunnels. And when the wind's not blowing, you release the compressed air to power your community. Or you just use this for six hours a day for peak power. Another low carbon way to do is to build big batteries to store the electricity. Why would you build batteries when you have, you can recirculate water and have uh, pumped hydro, or just compressed air storage. Why not do something like that that works, that is stupid simple, that probably won't break down for 50 years, and you can recycle everything you got there. More bang for your bucks with batteries. Again, pumped hydro, there's over a half a million places worldwide you can do it, naturally. And then compressed your pumped hydro, or 
compressed your storage. While the failing cost of solar and wind energy continues to exceed expectations, nuclear construction projects remain expensive behemoths with a history of cost overruns around the world. And experts in security and energy supplies at the University of British Columbia in Canada had said, wow, that's crazy. We demonstrated the cost of batteries declined, the cost of supplying electricity using a combination of renewables, and battery storage would be cheaper than using nuclear power, which is true. But it'd be cheaper again if you use pumped hydro storage and compressed air storage. You don't, why would you use batteries? They argue the battery technology isn't advanced enough to do what reactors are already capable of doing within the vanishing window of opportunity to avert a catastrophic global warming. But um, you see all these countries where, like Singapore is planning 30 years down the road to have nuclear. If you... If you use uh, pumped hydro and compressed air storage, that that stuff has already matured. You can do it. You can do it in your home with cascade tanks, right? You know what I'm saying. You can store energy with cascade tanks instead of uh, batteries. The falling cost of solar and wind energy. Continues to exceed expectations. Exceed. That's being polite. It blows it away. Nuclear constructions are expensive behemoths, right? So they say that uh, large, the largest battery stores can only provide backup electricity for a few hours. Yeah, of course. Why would you use batteries when you can use compressed air storage? See, if you took wind and solar, backed it up with geothermal tidal energy, backed that up with pumped hydro and compressed air storage, all six of them, problem solved. Again, they talk about less sunshine, no wind, right? And over the years now, this is the constant argument, is there's no storage solution when there absolutely is storage solutions. There's 100% storage solutions. And they're, real, they're the solution, the actual solution, applicable to multi-millions of people. Particularly if you used all six, right? Wind, solar, pumped hydro, compressed air storage, and geothermal, which is 24 hours a day energy. It doesn't matter for wind, sun, rain, whatever. And tidal energy. There's many different ways to get energy from the ocean, not just tidal. But you can predict the tide for thousands of years, right to the second. Instead, you're going to try to develop something that could take 10, 20, 30 years. This is what we see over and over, too, on top of that. The solution's right there. No, not doing it. Dana said it. We don't want to undo it because Dana said it. Right? They'd, they'd rather see the planet burn in hell than use the solutions that are available. Tons of solutions available. They won't use them. Well, there's no solution. There's no way to store the energy. We can't use wind and solar. <laughs> well, in Ontario, Canada, you can't use uh, wind because they closed down 700 farms last year because it was competition to the nuclear industry. If you paired them up with storage, like compressed air storage, because you can do that anywhere, it's only low pressure, 120 PSI, 
So it doesn't even matter how stable the ground is. You can do it anywhere. Rolls-Royce small modular reactor design. Again, right, they're going to spend decades trying to resolve this one. But they won't put a nickel in the storage. Well, Bruce Power in Canada got $4 billion last year. Or this year, actually. They were supposed to be for renewables. They got it. They're going to use it for, for pump storage for a nuclear power plant. Now, why would a nuclear power plant need pump storage? Well, so renewables don't get it and make nuclear look bad. It's the only reason they've done it. And they done it. And they got the money. So this time around, there was $5 billion for bonds, for green energy bonds. Nuclear industry is pissed because they don't get to steal that too and destroy everybody's future. Because they're gutless. They're incredibly gutless. And, and uh, they know what they're doing. It's not an accident that they came out and complained. They had no right to complain. I just, it's heartbreaking that they call themselves humans when they're not human at all. Not everyone is convinced nuclear power is a reliable tool, just the hardcore crazies in the nuclear industry. In the effort to slow global warming, which is caused by radiation fallout for 76 years. Could nuclear fusion save us? No, stupid. Like, if you used renewables with storage, it's game over for coal, oil, gas, and nuclear immediately. Not five years down the road, not ten years down the road, but immediately, within one year. Russia's role in world's nuclear energy industry prompts call to up U.S. uranium production. Russia has about 40% of the world's capacity for uranium enrichment, most nuclear power plants get their rich in uranium from Russia. Most of the 32 countries using nuclear power rely on Russia for some part of the program, including the U.S. of A. Use of Russia's uranium for Swiss nuclear power under scrutiny. Well, it was an interesting story. Um, Russia state-owned nuclear firm Rostatom helped two nuclear power plants in Switzerland with fuel. The commercial link is now under scrutiny as the Western world puts financial pressure on Russia to stop its aggression against Ukraine. How come they didn't do that when they were flattening Syria? In a statement published on Thursday, Environment... So NGO Greenpeace, first off, they're not an environmental group, right? They're a lobbying group. They're a controlled opposition. Urged the authorities of seven Swiss cantons, which owns Axpro, to stop burying, buying uranium from Rostatom. There is a concerted effort immediately now, on schedule, um, to buy nothing from Russia. But what that does is it causes inflation worldwide. This is not an accident, what we're seeing, folks. By paying for Russian uranium, because uranium is just one of the many things, Switzerland could also indirectly help finance Russia's military apparatus. If you spend any money on Russia, you're going to finance the military. Like, that's true for every country, isn't it? Governments must commit to nuclear turn away from it, experts says. That's desperation, what you're seeing there. That framing out a narrative like that, that's desperation. Sir Dieter Helm wants to stop, wants a stop and start approach, or I'm sorry, warns, a stop and start approach could harm investments in areas like wind. It's no accident that most nuclear power is built by government on government money with government-owned companies. 
I'm not advocating you have to have government-owned companies. I'm simply making the point. He's a professor of uh, energy policies at the University of Oxford. You know, Oxford, where they had Wade Allison, the nuclear nut job, Wade Allison. When you make nuclear decisions, what you don't want to do is decide. Well, let's try three and see which one works. That's the British policy. You wait 10 years to find out if one of them works. So build three nuclear power plants, wait 10 years, and see which one actually worked proper. That's responsible, isn't it? It's not. Build 10 death machines, wait 10 years to see if one of them don't have incredible emissions. So First Nation signed a nuclear cooperation deal with the Canadian Nuclear <laughs> Safety Commission. That's a great name, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. Sounds like, you know, upstanding citizens of our country, right? These are goblins. These are actually goblins we're talking about. These are actually goblins. And uh, the lady to the right is 100% goblin. And the natives to the left are sucked into this death machine. Why is nuclear under land in the first place is the real question. Why do they got facilities within the band's traditional territories? Because nuclear loves to poison the natives' communities. It's almost a, um, a religious thing for nuclear industry to destroy the natives' communities with diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. Over the coming decade, Ontario and Canada will make decisions on the energy supply mix, the deployment of small modular reactors, so that just showed up this week again in the conversation, right? This for the last couple of months, I don't think we even heard tell of it a single time. Now, uh, each day, there's three, four, five, six stories, or even more on small modular reactors. There's a big push, right? It'll quiet down in a few days. Respecting indigenous rights and treaties are part of the process. Really? When? Name one friggin' time that was part of the process. Part of the process is extermination, as there are significant treaty rights related to nuclear projects. Slovakia energy supply will continue to depend on nuclear power. Nuclear power currently accounts for 50% of Slovakia's power generation. 50%. So they've been taken over by the nuclear industry, see? Is expected to count for 65% of the country's generation by 2035. So the nuclear industry got that country ruined. That country is ruined. The following export product groups represent the highest dollar value in Slovakian global shipments. So I looked up what did Slovakia export, and I was like, please, don't let it be food, don't let it be food, don't let it be food. And it wasn't, because they got nuclear, so. The last thing you want nuclear doing is uh, exporting food. And although the government is looking to expand its renewable power capacity, <laughs> the nuclear industry will make sure that never happens. There is no concern that North Korea is preparing a nuclear underground test. There's fear-mongering, but there's no concern. If you were slaughtered by the United Nations and then isolated for 70 years, you'd be doing that too. I don't like it, but you, I can understand it. Ukraine's nuclear operator, Russia troops are leaving Chernobyl nuclear power plant and headed towards Belarus. This is a really strange story today. 
Ukraine nuclear operator, Russia, which is Chernobyl plant we're talking about, Russian troops have left Chernobyl and gave back Chernobyl to the Ukrainians. Signed to the paper, apparently, and they're headed towards Belarus border. IAEA concludes long-term operational safety review of South Africa Kohlberg's nuclear plant. The IAEA is with is part of this organization, corporation known as United Nations. That's who they are, see? And they don't have any sovereignty over any country on the planet. It's equivalent of putting Greenpeace in charge of everything, see? Giving Greenpeace a military and billions of dollars and say, well, go out and fix the planet. Instead, you got 195 militaries disguised as uh, United Nations. An International Atomic Energy Agency team of experts. These are the insiders that have murdered many in their history, poisoned communities, now they get a cushy job murdering thousands and millions each year for the nuclear industry. It's horrific to even exist. But uh, South Africa, they're, they're built on fault lines. They're used inferior cement. They got incredible amount of issues. There's a huge amount of activists down there that have uncovered um, crazy breakdowns in uh, that facility. And that most of the big... Um, most of the senior staff have quit because the plants are brittle, releasing a lot of radiations. The Dalai Lama and many others have urged, signed another piece of paper to end the Ukrainian war, nuclear weapons, bless their hearts. And a dozen other Nobel Peace Prize winners have signed an open letter calling on citizens around the world to join with them in rejecting war and nuclear weapons. A partnership with International Physicians for Prevention of Nuclear War. They're a big organization, yeah? And whenever I see big organizations like this, I lose faith in them right away. They also got a health blog. They got, a, they got, they got, they also now do armed violence and health blogs. So they branched out into the crazies, right? Just stick to the nuclear weapon machine. That's what you're designed for. Now you diluted the message. So these are the staff. So I got a lot of staff. These are the board of directors, and they got lots of them. Boards of directors. Tons of boards of directors, all suits. Almost. Was inspired by Dr. Murderous Helen Caldercott. Of course, Helen is a brutal traitor. Her and Arnie Gunnison, what they done, and Christopher Busby. Uh, it's just my goodness, eh? What a terrible, terrible bunch of people. And I'm not talking about these in particular, obviously. But I, I'm really suspect when I see these organizations like this, and they always get all these different members, they're always changing. There's nobody's in charge. There's room for takeover, and then that's what happens, right? You know, I wanted to start up a foundation, but the problem was, when I die, they take over the foundation. And they use my good name, right, to trick and deceive the population. Every foundation, that's what we've seen happen. Every single one. It's taken over by the goblins immediately. The climate crisis. See, if you're going to talk, and youth engagements... 
So they also have a youth engagement tied directly in with United Nations. Right at their building, in fact. The 777 UN Plaza in New York. They have a UN desk there because they're bringing in the children. And so they've been taken over. And that was back to the Dalai Lama story. I forgot to put that back up with it. My apologies. That was the people that signed up the paper that we were talking about with the Dalai Lama just in the previous story. War sanctions snag Russia's building of Turkey nuclear plant. Score! That's fantastic. Sanctions imposed over the invasion of Ukraine are complicating Russia's construction of a 20 billion nuclear power plant in Turkey. Oh, gee. 20 billion? Russia, the nuclear industry, just uh, every three months, the price skyrockets for nuclear. Russia nuclear weapons manufacturers use a Swedish technology. So after Krima crime invasion over by Russia, Russia invaded Crimea, is that how you pronounce that? Sweden had put a band on this stuff, but Russia's still getting their hands on it from the company, breaking their own records. Twelve of the Russian state nuclear weapon manufacturers use this technology from Sweden. Sweden producing weapons, uh, parts for nuclear weapons, are you? Equipment from companies like Sandvik, SKF, and Atlas, uh, Kotko, which is uh, Swedish names, I guess. After the annexation of Crema in 2014 and the following sanctions imposed by EU, Sweden has forbidden the sale of products for military use to Russia. However, after an internal investigation, and the companies confirmed that the companies had found more than 50 deals that violated its own rules. What a horrible company making pieces for nuclear weapons. What horrible people, eh? Guess few defeating a Hitler with nuclear weapons. Defeating a Hitler. And this is kooky. The headline is not just kooky, the story is kooky. In the Persian Gulf, a year before 911, uh, in um, the year 2000, our nuclear submarines were part of a carrier battle group tasked with maritime intercept operations, where United Nations, United Nations, sanctions against Saddam Hussein's Iraq. They were to prevent ships from carrying Iraqi crude oil from reaching black markets. And so any ship they would stop it, get on board it with guns, take over the ship, terrorize the crews, and see if it was an illegal cargo. Uh, it's absurd, it's absurd what they used to do. I had a friend of mine who was a um, a Navy engineer I grew up with, and he was telling me that that was one of his favorite jobs. He would get dressed up in all the combat gear, and he would strap on a 9 millimeter, and they would go over and get aboard these ships and take over these ships. And he said it was a real power trip. I said, you see, some people were just terrified, didn't even, because like, they would just, it would happen in nighttime sometimes, we'd just come right on board, just horrify and, and mortify everybody on these ships. Actual terrorism. Despite operational success, the sanctions failed. Studies have shown they did little to influence Saddam Hussein's behavior, but only punishing the Iraqi people, resulting in hundreds of thousands of people dying. So the UN killed hundreds of thousands of people by doing that. 
But that's what UN is. It's 195 militaries. United Nations sanctions. Not against Saddam Hussein, but against Iraq itself, which ultimately is the people punishing the Iraqi people, resulting in hundreds of thousands of dead. Said uh, less than a years later, both the World Trade Center towers were felled by Al Qaeda. Well, that's not true. If like, and a lot of people get upset about this uh, story for some reason. You're not you're not really allowed to talk about it on YouTube. On top of the, uh, on top of that, that's right. They looted the country too, James. Yeah. All the artifacts, the the gold, the silver, the banks, the art, and stuck it on planes. She drove it back to America and auctioned it off to the cronies. Europe will still step up militarizations of Finland. Sweden are considered joining NATO and Germany and ramping up military spending because of Russia invading. Right, and so the military industrial complex is super happy that Russia done that. Look at a kickback and money come from that, right? Zelensky, which is the actor, president of Ukraine, he was an actor on TV, has experienced multiple assassination attempts. Yeah, and how many of people actually died in the country? They experienced experienced assassination attempts all the time. Every time they go get a can of milk. Will be canonized as a profile of courage in an age that favors triangulations, cowardness, and self-preservations. Like he's willing to destroy the whole country is what drives me insane because that's what Russia, Russia will be happy to oblige him too. And so 30 plus million Ukrainians won't have a home to go back to. But he'll be canonized as a profile of courage propped up by NATO. He'll be canon he should be canonized as NATO's little bitch. Sanctions will be disproportionately credited for Russia's defeat. And that's this guy. You can tell just looking at that, you're not going to have a normal conversation when you meet someone like that looks like that. He's completely delusional, this guy. And Russia, despite its Hitler-like overreach, will continue to fantasize about territorial expansion and rattle its nuclear saber. Due to the wonderful dumb luck of the West, more so than any concrete responses, Ukraine is having success fighting against the Russian forces. Ukraine is having success is because all the NATO countries are shipping them shoulder launch stinger missiles, javelin missiles, shoulder launch rockets from Canada. Just pull the trigger and throw it away. Ukrainian nuclear operator, Russian troops leave Chernobyl. They're claiming they're leaving Chernobyl because they're radioactive and getting sick. The Russian troops panicked at the first sign of illness, which showed up very quickly and began prepared to leave. So they're saying they got radiation sickness, and that's why they left. Energrotom Atom, which is your EU, so the Russians have signed a document confirming the handover to Chernobyl plant and stating the plant's administration doesn't have any complaints about the Russian troops who were guarding the facility. It turned out the occupiers guarded the station for more than five weeks so well that there was no complaints. Well, that's an interesting statement because the media portrayed it as if they were working with a gun to their head. The sale of the former, I can't even pronounce that one, Kiwani nuclear power plant approved. We talked about this a couple of days ago. Another story about it. 
They sold it. They sold it to a country, a company. It was a pressurized water reactor. Let me see. It was owned by Dominion Nuclear Projects and transferred to Energy Solutions. And on Thursday, it was uh, announced by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which doesn't regulate anything. In fact, they figured they can decommission it now by 2030, the new company. The Nuclear Regulatory figured it was 2073. In 53 years, it would be decommissioned. The new company, no, we can do it in eight years. Well, what are you going to do with the radiation? Oh, don't worry about the nuclear fuel. We can do it in eight years. That's frightening. You can't do it. The reason you need 53 years because you would release a large amount of radiation into the environment. Energy Solutions not said what it plans to do with the radioactive waste, which is the fuel rods, which is what they should have called the fuel rods. After the plant is razzed and decommissioned, it will open up acreages of lakefront property. That's the last spot you want to build your dream home. What a cruel thing to do, eh? Yeah, so seven environmentalists detained at the French nuclear power station today. That is a decade behind construction and five times the price, the original price. According to a communique from the environmental group, which is not, they're not environmental group, they're a controlled opposition. Those arrested were trying to carry a peaceful, now there's good people there because they get, um, they need good people there to, to draw us, people like us in, right? But we know from cover and Greenpeace, they're not who they claim they are. We're lying to carry... We're trying to carry the peaceful action to denounce the irresponsibilities of the French President Emmanuel Macron and other presidential candidates who wish to revive the nuclear energy. They carry banners reading, For peace, neither fossil nor nuclear. And that's great news. So to denounce nuclear, that's a start. Evidence shows Hunter Biden is behind the Ukraine laboratories. We covered this when it originally, the bio laboratories, when that originally came out. Russia Ministry of Defense reported Thursday to have the correspondence of Hunter Biden, the son of the American president, which confirms his important financial link with the bio laboratories for military use in Ukraine. And they showed the uh, Western media also referred to the existence of the documents. So they're saying the Pentagon was funding it. It's not just any person involved in the creation of biolabs in Ukraine, the very president of the United States. And that the investment fund run by his son is one of the financiers of research implementation of the U.S. military biological program in that country. And Newland, for her part, speaking at a hearing before the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations on March the 9th, and we covered that, I believe, a minute there was objects in Ukraine where research in the field of biology is being conducted, and Washington is trying to prevent them from falling under the controls of the Russian forces. So they had went and destroyed it, see? And we had covered that story back in March. It began the first week of March. They received intelligence from employees of Ukraine's biological laboratories about the emergency destruction of particularly dangerous pathogens on February 24th, including the plague, anthrax, and other biological weapons. Wow. Czech Technical universities construct new research reactor. And we've seen that the research reactors from Germany and France, where they'd done studies on populations, was more males than females 
So they had effect, even the research, a small research reactor was affecting the entire population because that's the only way you can get that kind of discrepancy. It would be located in the same reactor hall where the faculty has been operating the VR1 reactor since 1990. Uh, this is a... Coil Hill. We're going to have to do a whole video on Coil Hill. I can see that. Radioactive nuclear waste might be safer than you think. Regardless of whether you're for or against nuclear power, uh, Coil Hill. He's not a YouTuber. He's a university. That's a university site. Yeah, he's... Uh, you know, he's another Catherine Higley, like we covered last night. He'll cut your throat to do what he's doing. He's not an award-winning science educator. He's a perpetual lawyer. He's a public relation firm for the industry. Marvel Discovery says subsidiary new Marvel Energy to focus on small modular nuclear reactors. Again, we're seeing the small modular nuclear reactors that don't exist that once they do finally build one in 10 years, if they start right now, which they haven't, uh, would take 10 years to figure out the problems. Then they have to redesign it to, uh, get, you know, to design out those flaws and uh, any other good attributes they can come up with, and then build a new one to make sure before they can come up with an actual production. And so... This is the nuclear industry drowning. And anybody that tries to save them, they're going to grab onto them and drown them too. In a statement, the company said Canada is one of the most promising markets. 5.3 billion by 2040. Uh, in 18 years' time. And so the nuclear industry will just create, will create everything in order to get their hands on that particular money. They don't care if it works or not. They'll just create it. Again, that's not a, you know, let me run this again. 5.3 billion. We covered the small modular reactors yesterday. They're 5 billion each. So that's not a market. That's a single reactor. Right? So they blow it completely out of proportion. More funding announced to further new scale technology. And uh, I hate new scale with a passion. I think they're despicable lawyers. They're ridiculous, pathetic scum for sure. We've been able to prove that over the last number of years. And uh, Sailing Stone is subsidiary Pickering Energy Partners. They'll get some fun, they get tens of millions of dollars, but you can't do anything with tens of millions of dollars in the nuclear industry. They piss that down the toilet all the time. It's nothing in nuclear. And so it looks like the shareholders of Spring Valleys are going to get fleeced for 10 million bucks by the looks of it. Suicidal Angels signs with nuclear blasts. They're what they call trash uh, bands. It's a certain genre of music. Again, right, Nuclear Blast is the major label for musicians of, like, heavy metals and, and trash and stuff like this. Uh, and so that's brainwashing and indoctrinating the children. Was there any reason they picked the words Nuclear Blast? India... Or India, yeah, India wants to send its uh, used fuel rods back to Russia. A heavy U.S. strata fortress bomber built to carry nuclear weapons takes off from UK. You can actually track it on those phone apps. The story is so stupid; it makes me sick. Now, they'll. F They'll actually, that burns an absurd amount of fuel. And so they'll fuel it on the fly. And then these things will regularly fly 24 hours a day. 
uh, and it burns over a million cars worth of fuel in 24 hours. High in the sky. The worst spot. Talk about emissions. What an Oregon decision means for Bill Gates' back nuclear project. Well, the or apparently Oregon is not going to back it. And it's not Bill Gates. Bill Gates just signed his name onto it, right? Americans used more electricity generated from renewables than nuclear and coal in 2021. Try wrapping your mind around that one. Milestone for UK waste project. Milestone. So the uh, major project disposed more than 1,000 stainless steel drums of waste. Well, the uh, the Wigner effect, it doesn't matter what kind of drum it is, the Wigner effect is going to break those drums down. And they're going to, they don't put them in stainless steel drums because it's low level. But that's where they're going to put it, to the low level waste repository site in the UK. I got no idea what site that is. I've been trying to, because you know, I, I do so much work each day, right? And I can only spend so much time on a topic. I'll have to get back to that one because I don't know which the Magnox of course they're a non-decommissioning authority in the United Kingdom they never decommission anything so I'm not familiar with what this story is so I, I can't really I will buy next week I'll have a handle on it the drums will be transported by rail in containers and uh, multiple consignments. Nuclear waste services. Again, these are, they got no proof that they have done any kind of decommissioning whatsoever anywhere in the United Kingdom. Nearly half of the Americans concerned about nuclear war. I don't believe that, but that's, again, New York uh, media, close to half Americans said they're concerned that Russia would directly target the U.S. <laughs> yeah, because Russia is not going to attack America with a nuclear weapon. And they claim an additional 3 in 10 are somewhat concerned. So they're artificially inflating the fear, right? So now they're saying 8 out of 10 people are concerned. Now to say nine out of ten Americans are at least somewhat concerned that Vladimir Putin might use a nuclear weapon against Ukraine, including about six and ten who are very concerned. I think these are degenerate, the people that wrote that story. And a Soviet monster tank designed to survive a nuclear blast. This never went into production. And um, this is a museum or something. Worker lockout is new worry at nuclear plant in Pilgrim. Uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission says radioactive releases, they're talking about a million gallons, they're going to dump uh, in the Cape Cod Bay. It's always been at safe levels. Again, this industry has no checks and balances whatsoever. There is more to worry about, they said, than the possibility discharge of a million gallons of radioactive water from Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station in the Cape Cod Bay. That was the mess each Monday meeting at the Nuclear Decommission Citizens Advisory Panel. There's more to worry about than a million gallons going out into your harbor of radioactive water. Really. Really. The panel of citizens, a local useful idiots, and representatives from a handful of state agencies. These are, they hate your guts, these people. These are not even subhumans, half of them. Told by the officials of Laborers Union Local 721 
60 skilled workers have been locked out of the plant by owner of Holtec International. And it's related to some remarks made by a national union member to a top Holtec official. So a union member said something to an official, now 60 people don't got a job. <laughs> Bullies. And Holtec is reportedly now replacing the laborers with untrained workers who don't know the job or the related safety standards, which is prior and course for the nuclear industry, by the way. It's about safety for the public. Replacement workers are being paid 25 cents an hour or more than the union workers make. So it's not about money. Uh, from what these guys are saying, they got Homer Simpson running the plant. It's always a Homer Simpson running these places. That's why the Simpsons were so popular to brainwash everybody. The radioactive water comes from the plant's spent fuel pool. So it's saturated. The fuel is splitting the atom. The, the pools, by the way, are evaporated up the stacks every day. So Holtex is saying that if you don't let us put us in the harbor, we're just going to evaporate it. That's what they're saying. If you don't let us dump it in the harbor, we're going to have to use diesel generators to evaporate it. Trucking the waste off-site is the second alternative. Yeah, where are you going to send it to? Somewhere else and dump it? They're supposed to put it in a repository for a million years, see? So nobody's paying attention. No one's allowed to pay attention. They have hundreds of security guards at these places, so you can't even challenge them. They're thugs. They're mass murderers. Show sure, radioactive releases were ongoing in the plant operators. Well below the allowed annual limits for the exposure to the human body of 100 millirims. Why the hell are you using miller? We don't use millirims anymore. We use millisievers, microsievers, or unisievers. Millirims is stuff we used during Chernobyl. 36 years ago. Why are we doing that? Whenever you see them doing that, they're covering up something, see? Now, first off, you don't use millirims. The stuff that's going in the in the water, you don't measure that in millisievers or microsievers or millirims or stuff like that. You measure it in atomic decays per second, which is what the Geiger counter up there is doing per minute, that one. And you're talking about atoms that are pulsing energy every second. That's what you're going to measure. That's Unisievers, microsievers, millisievers are not atoms. And when you hear people use those terminologies, they're lying to you. And it's always because they can't tell you the truth. Because you'll figure it out right away, see? Is the limit set by his organization? Well, 25 millirims is the limit set by the environmental protection agencies. But you don't use millirims for dose. You, they do, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed to use atomic decays per second. Beckwells. So when the minute you see millirims or microrims or unisievers or millisievers, they're lying to you, and there's a reason they done. They said that specific word. Millirims are only used to deceive you. And people that do it should be arrested and jailed immediately for at least 30 years. Oh, and scumbags from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, the degenerate scumbags from that group, so they're up to no good, see? Experts at the world government. So there's a world government symposium summit. The world government summit. That should freak you out that they're doing stuff like that. 
On day two of the World Government Summit, my God. We lost the planet to monsters. This one company was bragging that 70% of the employees are under the age of 35. That's not actually something you should brag about. It means you don't have the experience there. It's not that people under 35 can't be proficient. But that, use, that proficiency usually comes from working with older people that's been doing it for 20, 30, 40 years, see? And the younger people have these, these knowledgeable people in the lunchrooms and everywhere else that they can ask questions of and get instant uh, answers and solutions. Russia troops leaving Chernobyl after radiation exposure. Which could be true, right? That, that could be true. I'm not saying it's true, but I'm just saying it could be true. Russian troops began leaving the Chernobyl nuclear plant after soldiers got significant doses of radiation from digging trenches at the highly contaminated site. That's crazy. That's definitely would have happened if they were digging trenches there. They would have got definitely got brutal doses. It's impossible to avoid it. The World Association of Nuclear Operators transfers all of Ukraine's Nuclear power plants to the Paris Center. I haven't figured out what the hell that's all about. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't really give you... And I... Uh, it was, this was just before I went live, some of this stuff. UK HFCA to examine the potential for nuclear hydrogen energy. So, uh, we've heard... They want to use nuclear to produce hydrogen and call the hydrogen green. But nuclear is the most carbon-intensive thing on the planet. By proxy, then, your hydrogen is the most carbon-intensive hydrogen. And hydrogen is incredibly carbon, in, per se. Like, it needs a lot of carbon-intensive being. It's got to use a lot of fuel to produce it. But, say, when they got an agenda, they don't, see, they don't seem to care. Right, these use nuclear hydrogen as a zero carbon alternative to green H2 made with renewable energies. So they're saying hydrogen from nuclear is better than from renew hydrogen from renewables. They, they'll destroy the planet and it will make no sense, but that's the nuclear industry. Uh, this is a crazy story. I would like Poland to have nuclear weapons. I bet you would. The leader of law and justice believed that the state with a large and well-equipped army is a safe and secure one. Unfortunately, which is true, but he does, when I look at him, he doesn't exactly give me a lot of confidence because he's saying we like Poland to have nuclear weapons, which means he's going to be ready to use them too. He said, as a citizen, which he's not, right, he's a government agent, I can say that I would like Poland to have nuclear weapons. I would like the nuclear industry to be jailed for... As soon as someone applies at a university to go into the nuclear, they should be locked up in a mental institute and given a drip, sick. And we can kind of, we can kind of weed them out that way. I told you, uh, tonight wouldn't be as bad as last night. Last night was brutal. It was a lot of work. And that was the cycle we got here today. So the new nuclear power plant in the United Kingdom, surrounded by farms. The weapons manufacturing facility in the United Kingdom, surrounded by farms. That's not normal, man, to poison people like that. Just, like, almost all nuclear power plants do that. And that's, that's actually the definition of evil.
to surround nuclear power plants. And almost every nuclear power plant you look up, you're going to see it surrounded by farms. That's the one for United Kingdom. Size will see, stop size will see, going to be surrounded by farms. Because the farm sucks up the radiation. You eat it and get sick and die. Your children, your friends and your family, you have a big meal, everybody ends up getting sick in a few years and dying. If you're eating it all the time, and you are, particularly if you're in Canada, Canada's started shipping food. I see the Geiger counter finally give up the ghost. Had the poll do tonight. We're going to close down the poll in about a minute. We got uh, 71 votes. Uh, is nuclear disease factories, also known as nuclear power plants, actually green energy? And 87% of the people said, no, it's not green energy. They're like, come on, Dana. No. I, said, I just... Because there's people out there don't know any better. And you guys, when you vote, you, you make a big difference doing that. And 51 thumbs up. That's pretty darn good. Because I'm censored like crazy. Here's probably one of the worst jobs you can have. They're wearing tungsten vests outside of Reactor 3. That's them there with their tungsten vest on. Man, in paper suits with tongues and vest on. That's that terrifying, unbelievable, terrifying. I'm just going to say goodnight to everybody. We're going to end the poll. Let's end the poll. Uh, Port Angeles, Michael, Allport, uh, Richard. McCann, Warren, Shayla, hi Shayla, Shayla threw us uh, $12 last night, thank you Shayla, everything adds up in a hurry, you know, Patrick, Dana Nasana, I hope you're doing good Dana, Peace, we're going from the top down, John Curtis, Thinker, Chelsea, James Lucid, who called in. Wow, that was awesome. And kicked ass on top of that. And I'm just doing a quick shout out to everybody. Andrew B, which is C-F-I-N-S-T-R. And so it's been a long week, hasn't it, for um, shows? Was we've done a lot of news. It's been a big cycle of news this week. Darlene and anybody I accidentally miss, you got to realize. Um, I seen Colette was there at the beginning of the show. Hi, Colette, Colleen, Colette. Oh, my goodness, I'm losing it. Dana's finally losing it. Kevin Blanche. Kevin's a major anti-nuclear activist, folks, if you're not familiar. Kevin Blanche. Uh, we're just doing a quick shout now for good night for everybody. It was a tough, um, tough five days. I do my show start on Sunday, ends on Thursday. So I take sar uh, Friday, Saturday off and usually do research uh, trips. But we've been doing a lot of projects, uh, trying to repair equipment and everything. I actually got four projects on the go at the one time right now, out on the table in the shed. Super happy. Spring is coming, another three or four weeks, the snow might stop. 
We got to get back on the ocean. We got to get back out in the woods. And uh, the equipment I got is not going to repair itself. We can't afford to hire people to repair it. And so, busted knuckles. Uh, like uh, Monday, I was really stiff because I haven't been doing stuff like this all winter. Now I'm starting to limber up a bit. I'm still so stiff when I wake up in the morning because I'm bending over and, and ratcheting with tools and everything else. And uh, the tools are fantastic. We picked up a lot of tools the last couple of weeks I wasn't expecting to get till the spring. And so we're working on projects right away. This is a huge deal. Really, like, it's hard to appreciate how much that changed me. But you can tell this week I've been hammering the shit of the shows this week. Totally re-energized me. Adrian. Uh, did I miss anybody? Port Angeles is Turkey Soup. I think we got everybody. That compressor is a thinker. I asked, how's the compressor? It's a 20 gallon compressor. It runs for about four minutes uh, with the tools before it kicks back in. So that's way longer than I was expecting. I think it's friggin' amazing. I think it's absolutely amazing, that compressor. Just double checking to see if I missed anybody. Shout out. Yeah, Darlene says, turn off the Wi-Fi in your house before you go to sleep at night. That's a great idea, folks. Trust me. It's a super, super good idea. You'll sleep much better, believe you me. And if you want to appreciate it, this spring when you're... A lot of people will start plants, right? So take the seeds, put half your seeds in, in one side and half the seeds in the other... Take half of it, rather, of your seeds and put them by your Wi-Fi. And take your rest of your seeds and put them in your normal spot. The seeds by your Wi-Fi won't germinate. It was an experiment by uh, fifth or sixth graders quite a few years ago. They were totally shocked. Yeah, air tools are the best. They really are. Just the power is over. It's over the top. I physically couldn't get some of these bolts off myself, even with a breaker bar. The air tool just ripped them right off. It was like, wow, <laughs> that's disgusting. I should have had them a long time ago. Okay, well, it looks like we made it through the night. And uh, it was a great poll. We've done good on the poll. We got spammed the last four polls. This is the first time in all these years we've ever had that happen to us. Nuclear industry. The Wi Fry. Yeah. Wi Fry. Not Wi Fi, but Wi Fry. Like a frying pan. Okay, that's it for me tonight, I guess. We'll see everybody. Sunday, um, unless there's breaking news, unless there's breaking news that comes out, I've done that again, unless there's breaking news, like an earthquake or something else, I don't know why I'm so exhausted as today, I work hard every week anyway, but I'm really exhausted 
tonight. When I finally had everything ready, I had about an hour or 40 minutes or something. I was able to just kind of relax. And I couldn't. And normally I would just sit there and just come to a stop, get ready to do the show. And uh, it was really difficult. I'll probably be okay tomorrow morning when I wake up. God bless everybody. Hugs for everybody uh, watching this tonight, tomorrow, and later. Hugs for you folks, too. We'll see everybody on Sunday night. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you get a chance. Uh, put me in your bookmarks rather than subscribing to me so you can find me. God bless and hugs for everybody. Have a great night and a great weekend. Take you, James. Awesome, man. We'll see. And people want to donate, they can donate at the bottom of the description. There's ways to donate. There's two ways. The only two ways you can donate. That's pretty awesome. We'll see everybody on Sunday night. God bless and hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.